All right, everybody, this is an emergency update because the stock market is blowing up. So I felt it was important to get a video out today to explain to you, number one, what is happening and what is not happening. Number two, why the market in certain areas is blowing up today so that you can know, number one, what to do about it, but most importantly, what not to do about it because plenty of people are gonna make some massive stupid mistakes today. Wanna make sure that that doesn't happen to you. No fancy editing, just recording and uploading. So right off the bat, we see the stock market right now is down. It was down a lot, two and a half percent earlier. Right now it's like two point. 2%, the NASDAQ is down 2.5%, the Dow is down 2%, the Russell 2000 is down 3.5%, it was 4% earlier. So stocks are falling kind of off of a cliff right now, it, or at least that's what it looks like. Um, this is one of the more important things that we're going to focus on a little bit later in the video, which is the VIX. The VIX you can see is up like 35%, it's at 25 earlier today it was at like 30 um, so number one, stocks are down big. Number two, the VIX is up big. Um, another thing that you're gonna notice if you look at the markets today is that short-term rates are down huge. So people are buying up short-term bonds like crazy. So uh, you know, short the six-month US Treasury is down like 3.6% right now. The one year is down 5.5%. The two year is down almost 6%. Um, and then the 10 year is down less, it's down like 4%, 20 year is down three and a half, and then uh, the uh, uh, 30 year yield is down three and a half. So this is uh, a flattening of parts of the yield curve, especially the 210 with the two being down 6% and the 10 being down only 4%. This is um, a steepening of the yield curve. And this is what's known as a bull steepener because the short end of the curve, uh, the, those bond prices are moving up faster. Uh, than the long end of the curve. And so it's bullish for the uh, long term or the short term bond owners. Rather than a bear steepener, which would happen from long term rates rising. So those long term bonds falling in price. So uh, this is uh, um, anticipation of the Fed cutting rates. Um, one of the reasons why we had the Fed uh, expectations of the Fed cutting rates, let's show that is because of this right here, the US unemployment rate rises again uh, unexpectedly. So this was, it rose more than the market expected. Not only that, the unemployment rate rose, but also the, uh, the uh, hiring slowed as well. So both of these are things that the Federal Reserve has been saying that they are watching because if employment, if the jobs market slows down too much, they don't want to keep things tight too long to trigger a recession, which by this point is probably, you know, it's, uh, you know, water under the bridge at this point, but that's what they're saying. So they're looking at the jobs market. They don't want to keep things too tight and cause a bunch of uh, widespread uh, unemployment here. So these numbers coming out worse than expected um, are, uh, you know, uh, indicative of uh, a higher chance of the market uh, um, uh, about getting those rate cuts. And in fact, right now you can see from this chart uh, posted by the stalwart on Twitter um, or on X, the market is now pricing in like a 75% chance that the Fed will cut rates not by a quarter of a percent, but by half a percent in September. Um, and that's as a result of both the market sell off today and um, the unemployment numbers. So that's what is happening right now. Let's take a look um, at, uh, well, I guess we already started talking about the reason why. So this unemployment, uh, I, I, the unemployment and jobs numbers, these are causing the bond market to start to turn over and the yield curve to start to uh, uninvert. Um, let's take a look at the stock market though. Here is uh, Amazon, um, which is down 10% right now. It was down as much as I think 12 or 13% earlier. Um, this is one of the reasons why the stock market has had some subpar performance lately, but also recently started to kind of fall off a cliff. Like we saw yesterday was a big red day. Today is a big red day. Um, earnings numbers are coming out well below expectations for a lot of companies. Um, another one was Intel. I think they were down 12% after hours yesterday. They're down now 27% uh, today because uh, they just came out with, you know, terrible uh, earnings. So we're seeing uh, earnings numbers turn over. So employment issues, earnings issues, this is gonna, this is uh, indicating problems with the economy, but also problems with the stock market. Um, a lot of people are looking at this and thinking, okay, well, the crash is here. And 
I think that that might be a mistake. And so I'll give you both sides uh, of the, uh, the argument here. But one reason that I think is being overlooked, um, oops, not, not VOL, um, is the unwind of the short volatility trade. So uh, back in eight months ago, so for almost a year now, I've been warning about the, uh, the short volatility trade is going to blow up at some point. So these things, a lot of times, you're able to see the early warning signs far far earlier than the problems actually show up. Um, and this is one of those examples, but for at least eight months now, I've been warning, hey, the short volatility trade is gonna blow up at some point. And if we look at the VIX, it looks like that's what has started happening. It began um, a couple of weeks ago and now has really started to unwind as a bunch of uh, short volatility uh, uh, money gets closed out. So I'd like to uh, I'd like to give you a little bit of a background on that. If you want more of a detailed explanation, go watch this video from eight months ago. Everyone is shorting volatility and it's about to blow up. Um, and uh, so basically when you, uh, um, the, the VIX, it's a measure of, volatility on the stock market. It is measured by looking at the price of at the money options on SPX. Um, and so when the VIX is low, it's basically the market is pricing in a low chance of volatility because options prices on the market are very cheap. So the implied volatility there is very low. The market consensus is that it won't, uh, it won't move much. The price of an option indicates the consensus where the market expects that the underlying might move. So when you look at, at the money options on the SPX, it's going to uh, that's going to give you the uh, level of the VIX. Um, short volatility is basically betting against volatility, and so you're saying, hey, volatility is something that naturally bleeds out. It's not something that can just go up in perpetuity. Even after a spike, it just naturally goes down. Every time there's a spike, it goes down. And so there's been a strategy going on for a while now that's gotten huge called sh uh, shorting volatility. And this is a strategy that comes back over and over and over again, where basically you collect massive amounts of income for what seems like almost no risk because after a spike, you just start selling volatility and you bet that that volatility will bleed out of the market. And 99 times out of 100, you're right, but it's like playing the house of a lottery. One time you're wrong, you blow up. And that's what's happening right now, or at least that's what it looks like is happening right now. Um, and uh, so I've been warning people against shorting volatility for a long time. In fact, I do the opposite because when you do the opposite um, bet for volatility, you're wrong 99 times out of 100, but the one that you're right, you make up far more than you ever lost on all those wrong bets. One example is people have been putting money into funds that do this for them, like SVOL. There's other ones like SVXY and um, a couple other ones. But um, SVOL is one that's gotten very popular recently because they're apparently hedged so that if there is a big spike in volatility that they weren't anticipating, then they don't lose. But take a look at this today. Look at how much they're down. It's like, okay, yeah, you might be hedged, but this is not a winning strategy. Over the long term, this thing still bleeds out. Um, and so even stuff like this, I always recommend against um, because they have to take the amount of money and deploy it in the strategy regardless of what the market is telling them. Um, they can't be um, actively allocating it based on what the market is doing. And so it's just destined to bleed versus if you learn how to do it yourself instead of relying on somebody else to do something complicated for you that you don't understand, then you can do this intelligently and you can time your trades more effectively. Um, you can go long volatility when it's low and on days like today, like literally today, I closed out a trade, a long volatility trade that I had, taking some profits off the table. The reason why is because um, I think that this is a uh, this is a short term unwind. It looks like to me, at least, that the market is going to rebound from here. Um, and if I'm wrong, don't worry. Later on, I'm going to tell you some some you know some plays that you can make that will be, let you be able to profit from this um, either way. But it looks like uh, what some of the stocks that are doing after the big sell off, the volatility spiked here, um, and it started to come back down. Um, this looks like a short term unwind of some big money. This doesn't look like the start of a major stock market crash to me. Um, now, don't get me wrong, it very well could be. And so we're gonna get into how to play that uh, just, in case, uh, just in case I am wrong. But one thing that I never want anybody to do is short volatility. So I would not say, you know, Definitely don't sell 
options like naked like sell calls on the vix because that can blow you up and you can owe more money than you even have in your account i wouldn't even buy puts on the vix here because you're likely going to pay way more for them and uh than they're than they're worth and you're not going to come out with a chance for a for a good a decent profit um especially considering the risk that you lose money on that um and so uh, um, I also wouldn't just uh, you know sell all and go to cash. I mean, when I talk to members of Heresy Financial University, that's my private membership group, uh, my coaching group. I never tell them to go all cash. I never tell them to sell everything. I never tell them to uh, you know basically we stay invested in the good investments and the good asset classes with the proper asset allocation. Opportunities like this maybe give you an opportunity to rebalance. Uh, maybe one uh, part of your portfolio becomes overweight or underweight. Um, you know, like gold is holding up very well today. Bitcoin is having a little bit of a sell-off, but the S&P 500 and the other indexes, like they're, they're experiencing some heat here. So this allows you maybe an opportunity to rebalance, number one. But number two, we stay intelligently hedged. So during times when hedging is cheap, you load up on hedging. When times um, are, when ti during times when hedging is expensive, you don't hedge. Like you don't buy calls on the VIX when the VIX spikes. Like it's already too late. You're going to pay a lot for it and there's no profit potential. You don't buy puts on the S&P 500 when it's down over 2% in one day. It's too late by that point. You want to get your hedges in place when they're cheap because that's when the market is saying, hey, there's no possibility of this happening, but there's always a possibility of it happening. So you don't want to do it on days like today when volatility is spiking and everybody's piling in from fear because the chance is there's going to be a rebound and all of that premium is going to bleed out. So what to do instead? Number one, buy more of your good names. So j I'm just using this as an example. I like the company Amazon for the long term. Um, it's not a recommendation. I like the company Amazon for the long term. And on a day like this, look, this is, uh, you know, I, if, I'm, if I'm not treating this like a trader, um, I'm treating this like an investor. I'm saying, look, over the long term, let's, <laughs> let's zoom out a little bit. Um, over the long term, this is what Amazon does right? And so when you have when you have drops like this, those are opportunities to buy more shares at discount prices. So if you've got good names, and you're treating this thing like you know, you're a Warren Buffett investor, you're a value investor, um, you are looking at Mr. Market and saying, thank you, Mr. Market for the opportunity to buy these long term investments that are today on sale, the market is giving them to me at a price that is lower than uh, what um, from all my research, I can tell is the intrinsic value. And so uh, you look at these as opportunities, not as something to be scared of. The only reason you'd be scared of this is if you have your life savings in something like this um, and you are actively uh, selling it because you need to live off of the income from it um, and you don't have any hedges in place, then you look at something like this and be scared. But if you're a younger investor at all, if you have an, any, any sort of a long-term time horizon here, then sell-offs and market crashes and corrections are something to be appreciated. There's something to be thankful for. There's something, they're in a, they're something to be taken advantage of. That's the volatility. You want to see that. That gives you the ability. Then when it rebounds later, you have way more shares than if it would have just always only gone up. So that's number one, buying more of good names. Um, number two is taking profits of hedges and shorts. And so you should have had some hedges and shorts in place because markets up until a couple of weeks ago were uh, extremely um, overvalued and just going up and hedging was very, very cheap. Uh, and so having some puts on certain names that looked most overvalued, having some calls on VIX, having some even just some way out of the money puts on SPY or something like that. Uh, if you have any of those in place, then days like this is like, hey, like we can take some profits off the table on those. Now I've got some dry powder to pl plunge back into some names that are good. Or maybe I just keep that cash on the sidelines, um, you know, if I need it, expecting more of a drop, something like that. So days like this, when you have big, unreasonable drops, that's when you take some profits from your hedges. Uh, so that's number two. Um, now, number three is what if, what if I'm wrong about this and you're thinking, okay, well, this actually looks like this could be the start of something. Like when we go back to, uh, let's say this looks like the start of, you know, 2022 to you and you're thinking, okay, yeah, there's, you know, there's, there's a big drop here and we're headed a lot lower. That's very, very possible. And I'm not saying that it's not possible. Um, but one thing you'll notice is you get the big drops and you get a big bounce and you get a bigger drop, then you get a big bounce and you get a bigger drop, then you get a big bounce and a bigger drop, then a big bounce and a bigger drop. This, 
that's that's what always happens here. If we take a look what happened in um, 2020, when the market crashed within one month, the market crashed, what was that, like 30% from top to bottom, uh, 35%. Um, you have big drop and then a rebound. Then you have a drop, bounce, drop, bounce, drop, bounce, drop. And so you always have opportunities to uh, take advantage of the drop on a bounce. You don't want to try and pile into puts or pile into shorts or pile into calls on the VIX on the day in which it's happening because that's what all the money is doing. And so you're gonna be paying a lot for that, which means when you pay a lot for something, you reduce your profit potential and you increase your loss potential. You wanna do it on a bounce because then the price is a lot lower because the market is saying, oh, well, the carnage is done. And so the money bleeds out of it, the premium drops like crazy. So you wait for a bounce, even if the market crash has already happened. And the reason why I know this is true, um, like I like this isn't theory, I've done this. So back in 2020, when the market crashed in 30 days, 35%, that was big. And you would have thought, hey, if you didn't buy puts when the market was up here, then you were already screwed. That's not true. I bought puts on SPY, it was, it was on this day, I think, it was either March 2nd or March 4th, it was on this bounce. And after this fall, like that was a big fall. Puts had already gotten expensive. That was a 15% drop in the stock market in like two weeks. So a lot of people expected that on this bounce, that was gone, uh, that it was done. Like the market was, um, the, the market was, you know, uh, had, had, had finished falling. So you have a big, big fall and then it starts to rebound. That's when you load up, if you haven't already, if you don't have any in place already, that's when you load up on some hedges to the downside. That's when you buy some puts. And they're still cheap compared to the downside potential at this point. Um, to give you an idea, I I, load, I bought puts right here in on this bounce in March of 2020. And I closed them out, um, I believe it was on this day or this day. It was like a, it was like a two week holding period total, uh, like nine trading days, something like that. Um, and the puts that I bought, I then sold like two weeks later for an 1800% increase in value. And again, I did not nail the top. I did not nail the bottom. It was a two week holding period. I entered the short, um, after the market had already started to crash, but I waited till the bounce and I sold those puts before the market had finished crashing. And I still had an 1800% profit realized take home on that market crash. And so this is the proper way to do it. Number one, you enter into your short, um, your hedge, your puts on the S&P 500 after on a bounce, you don't do it on a day like today. Um, and then number two, you still have profit potential because number one, you're buying it on a cheaper day. So you're spending less money, which means you have lower downside potential if it doesn't go your way. If the market just goes up from here, you're not worried about it because you spent a couple hundred, maybe a couple thousand bucks and doesn't matter because the you know it was a small position relative to your portfolio. Mark goes up from here. Yeah, you lose everything, but at least you didn't spend that much money on it. If the market does continue to fall because you bought it for cheap, now it has all that explosive upside potential. And so you get those um, triple or quadruple digit returns on your hedge that can take, you know, that, that can literally take, um, you know, if you put 5% of your uh, portfolio or 1% of your portfolio in it, it can increase your overall portfolio uh, total value by 10, 20, 30% easily. So, um, uh, if you want to play this downside, don't do it on a day like today because there's just panic. You're going to pay way too much for it. Wait till a bounce because there's always a bounce on the way down. You don't have to nail the top and the bottom. You just have to make sure you, um, uh, don't pay too much. You wait for uh, wait for a bounce like that. Finally, um, shout out for one of my uh, upcoming, uh, events. This is uh, an asymmetric trading masterclass. You might've heard me talk about it already. I've done one of these in the past. Got another one coming up. It's I'm honestly perfect timing here. Like now that the market's doing this, it's kind of crazy timing, but I'm doing this on August 15th. So love for you to be there. Save the date on your calendar. It's Thursday, August 15th at 7 p.m. Eastern time. And this is a masterclass where I teach you literally the protocol and the system that I use to spot asymmetric trades. Asymmetric means you can lose this much, but the amount you can gain is way more. So you got asymmetric upside on these trades. 
I find them, I spot them, how to trade them so you have those asymmetric upsides. And last time I did one of these events, we had 6,000 people register. That was more people than could fit on the Zoom call. Might have even more people this time. So if you are interested in learning some, it's, it's a completely free event, but those spots are limited. So you're gonna have to sign up. The link is in the description below. Put in your email, save the date on your calendar, and I would say get there at least 12 minutes early because with so many people trying to get in, if you're trying to get in right at the last minute, you may have issues with you know just the tech issues, everybody getting in in that same minute. So show up early to save your spot. Sign up now. It's gonna be an amazing event. I promise you, you're gonna love it. Uh, uh, August 15th. Um, 7 p.m. Eastern time, it's a Thursday, and it's completely free sign up by putting in your email below. I'm gonna teach you everything I know. As always, thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.